Niger's military seized power last month, detaining the country's pro-Western president, Mohamed Bazoum, and dissolving the country's constitution. The head of Bazoum's own presidential guard now claims he is in charge of Niger. The coup has sparked fury within most of West Africa's political bloc, ECOWAS, which met this week to announce it is activating a standby force for a possible military intervention. But the bloc appears split with two member countries that also experienced coups recently, Mali and Burkina Faso, vowing to defend Niger's junta that is now in power. Joining me to discuss what is at stake is Rama Yad, who is the senior director of the Atlantic Council's Africa Center. She also served as France's Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs and Human Rights. Welcome, Rama. Help us understand what is going on here. The New York Times calls this the coup belt. And if you look at the Sahel, this area that is just below the Sahara and above the Sudanese savanna, it does seem like there have been, I think, about six coups in the last few years. Um, so what is going on? Niger is uh, the last frontier of the fight uh, against terrorism in, in Africa. And that's why, uh, that's the first reason why uh, this country matters so much uh, now. The second reason is that um, there is a strong fear that the region, the Sahel, collapses and uh, falls in the hands of uh, China and Russia. Because, as you know, there is a strong competition uh, between global powers and even regional powers in, in Africa. And Niger represents these uh, two two things, um, the last frontier of this fight against terrorism, against the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda in Africa, but also um, it's, a, it's an important asset for Western forces who would like to contain um, the, the Chinese and the Russian agenda in Africa. So this is getting very complicated, so let me, let me try to understand it, um, because what you see is in the same area of the Sahel, uh, global terrorism deaths have gone from about 1% in 2007, now it's up to 43%. So you have the Islamic State or ISIS or remnants of it destabilizing these countries, uh, which is then causing these governments to, to get weak and fragile and military coups. And meanwhile, the Chinese and the Russians are trying to take advantage. Are they allied? Are the Chinese and Russians allied with the military juntas that are taking control in these countries? You know, um, Russia, it's more a matter of opportunity and uh, China, it's not limited to uh, the Sahel. Um, this global competition is everywhere on the continent. But every time a coup happens in that area, you can see uh, Russian flags in, in, um, in demonstration, popular demonstrations. Africa is key um, in, in, uh, in its influence, in Russian influence, and it it's a good way for uh, for the Russian government to avoid uh, to avoid sanctions because uh, it's a rich it's a rich uh, territory and as you know Wagner is very active in in Mali for example uh, where they they try to develop uh, and they are developing a predatory business through diamonds gold sugar you know all these very um, important materials that uh, are very important to feed the war in Ukraine. So uh, no matter what we say here, the future of the war in Ukraine goes uh, through uh, the Sahel region. So that's why also it's so important. The whole thing does feel like one more uh, step backwards in terms of democracy, right? I mean, you, you had these countries that had uh, kind of heroically managed to become democracies and slowly one by one uh, it's, it is unraveling. Um, it, 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 f it feels to me like part of a global trend, but particularly concentrated in these fragile states in Africa. When you have been facing uh, the terrorist groups for 10, 15 years, um, in the 
poorest countries in the world, uh, knowing that you have to manage very vast and large, large territories where local governance is weak. I can tell you it's very challenging. And President Bazoum from Niger was doing his best. Many experts noticed that uh, the, 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 the number of attacks, of, of, of terrorist attacks against the civilians have, have decreased these past months, this past year. But it was not enough. And um, the, the, the ECOWAS, the regional West African organization, uh, decided to activate um, its standby force, uh, a military force, um, and to be ready um, to restore uh, the, the, the democratically elected President, Nico, uh, President Bazoum, who is detained right now in, in, in a house in Niamey uh, by the coup leaders. So it's a lot that is going on right now. A lot is on the line. Will they do cross that line? and uh, send the soldiers from ECOWAS to restore uh, the, the classic power in Niger or not. And in the meantime, the coup leaders are doing their thing. Uh, you know, they have appointed a new government, a new prime minister. Uh, they have closed the borders. They face the sanctions. Um, so, and under the, the eyes of a worried international community. So the, a lot is on, on the line right now. So there's a glimmer of hope there, and we will have to leave it at that and keep watching. Thank you so much, yeah. Ron. Thank you. Thank you, Farid, for having me. Next on GPS, many experts predicted the United States would be in recession by now. In fact, most. But the American economy is actually looking pretty good. Why did economists get things so wrong? I ask a Harvard professor when we come back.